What's up all you beware the Batman loving dudes and dudettes, Toys is here and I'm back yet again to give you guys another fresh look and that's a bit of a retro shiz all the way back to 2013 with the release of a brand new animated series at the time, Beware the Batman and it was a CGI, it was interesting Batman, it was the most French looking CGI Batman show I've ever seen, if you've seen those overseas European type animations where they use CGI, this definitely borrowed some elements from it here and there. A lot of the traditional Batman villains were not part of the show. They went a completely different route than was the previous Batman and Friends show, Batman the Brave and the Bold. That's an excellent show, by the way. Definitely check it out. But with Batman the Brave and the Bold, they introduced a lot of D-list almost F-list characters, we're just going to say. But Mattel did have the Batman license at the time and made toys for the show, so to speak. Just basically two Batman figures. The Batarang Battle Batman, which was pretty cool. More along the lines of like a kid's toy, kid's version of it. McDonald's had a Batman Beware the Batman tie-in. Lots of different toys. I actually have a couple of these here and there, which... I found it at a thrift store, we'll just say, didn't actually go to McDonald's to get them. But, of course, the figure we're going to be talking about today is the Batman Unlimited 2013 Beware the Batman action figure by Mattel. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee, and get ready to beware the Batman. Now, while I didn't really care for the show all too much, I can see that it was a nice experiment into the mythos of Batman. They definitely tried something different and I actually really like the design for this particular Batman. He's very much lanky. He's got an interesting shape. Very animated, angular head. Completely different from what I'm used to with Batman the Animated Series, of course. This one actually taking more of a cue from, let's say, Tim Burton. You know, the, that whole Batman, Batman 89. Interesting belt on him. I think overall he just makes for a really nice silhouette. He's a more spidery, really thin, gaunt type Batman, the way he moves. It's really just kind of emphasized with the articulation that you see on him. I really like the different blacks that they used for the color. Some of it's matte, some of it is shiny. So it's overall a nice contrast between the costume. You barely see the bat symbol on his chest, but it is there. And in speaking about kind of how he moves throughout the series, the, the articulation is there. Single joints mostly, the wrists will spin, the feet spin. So minimal articulation on him, but it works for the design of this particular character. You can see that he's very much just an angular, dynamic character, not a lot of movement. Plus, it's Batman. You're not going to be able to do much. Sure, a really articulated version of this would be okay, but I think too many cuts really breaks up that animated look. So he is very much a great silhouette, nice and angular, and he is at that six inch mark. He'll fit with a lot of different Batman, DC Multiverse, DC UC. He's a little bit too short, of course, for the new McFarlane DC Multiverse, but it's still very cool, very interesting Batman for your shelf. And I think that really where it falls short is in the accessories which is precisely zero. No batterings, no extra hands, heads, nothing like that. If you have, let's say, the new Bat Raptor or any type of Batmobile, he looks good. He looks good next to this Bat Raptor just because of the angular, different design, especially with what the Bat Raptor offers. He's about eh, roughly the same size as the Mezco Ascending Knight Batman that I have. You can kind of see where they also pulled a lot from the original look for Batman way back in 1939. NECA, of course, way too big, but if you can get those NECA ones, definitely grab those. This show actually really reminds me of the, not going to actually admit it, sequel series for Spider-Man, the animated series with Spider-Man Unlimited. kind of shares that sort of oddity. You know what I mean? It's a nice experiment, but you can tell that it ultimately kind of goes, nah. What, go back to what we know about Batman. But I am curious to know what you guys think about this Beware the Batman figure. Do you have it? Did you need to now get it? Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything about the TV show. Did, were you a fan of the show? I just, I, it was fun to watch. I really just didn't get into it, but I can really appreciate a good looking Batman design. I just really like the overall aesthetics for this guy. Would have loved to have seen a lot more accessories. Something. Something bad. It's Batman. It's like not giving Spider-Man webbing. You gotta give Batman some batterings. The head sculpt can be a little bit off. It kind of looks like antennas almost for his little bat ears, but overall, 
I like the figure, and I think you're going to definitely like it too. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember that when anarchy comes to town, well, I guess he's better than the Joker. I don't This show was bizarre. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios. <laughs>